Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to be talking to Gail about this awesome van and their fantastic wooden teardrop trailer. Hi, and welcome to our 1964 Chevrolet Corvair Greenbrier van. This is a very special van. Uh, we've owned it for 15 years, took two years to restore. And we've had it on the road for 13 and have been enjoying it like crazy. We've put about 36,000 miles on it now. Uh, we do a lot of camping in it. We do use it as a camper. The van was actually produced by Chevrolet from 1961 through 65. It's actually a very comfortable unit to travel in, uh, very comfortable to sleep in, and uh, I know you did all the we work, were right? not afraid to take it anywhere. I have <laughs> fully restored it with my wife. We had to change out the wiring harness, rebuild the engine, rebuild the transmission, rebuild the front suspension. Uh, so it has been completely gone through, and I wouldn't be afraid to jump in this and take it to California in a heartbeat. It is a deluxe model, which means it has padded side panels, uh, chrome trim, a uh, special deluxe steering wheel. Uh, I really get a kick out of driving it because I just love the artwork of the front dash. The only thing we really had to change out were the cushions and the curtains. They would not survive a 40-some year restoration. Uh, the floor is all original. Everything inside besides those two items are still original. Uh, the woodwork cleaned up very nicely. Now the bed, people ask us, the bed, will it fold into a seat? And yes, it actually will. I've got a brochure here. This is a genuine Chevrolet accessory. A lot of people also ask us, did you build this interior? No, this is a genuine accessory. One of the highlights a lot of people comment when they first see the van is the Coleman icebox. It's actually a cooler turned up on end. It's not a refrigerator. And the way it's designed, is you put a block of ice in here and as it melts you're supposed to drink it from the spout. Uh, we do not use it currently because we're afraid the plastic is over 50 years old and we just don't want to go over a bump and have the block of ice go through the bottom. But that's always a big uh, something that everyone always comments on. There is a lot of storage in this believe it or not. A lot of nooks and crannies. We've got the magazine rack here, uh, maps, magazines. Uh, this is a cupboard shelf area. We keep a lot of our cutlery and paper plates up there. Uh, I think it's really designed for like cans of soup, wow. stuff like that. Uh, a lot of the storage is inaccessible right now because of the bed and the position it is. But there are cabinets everywhere, there's storage underneath the bed. Uh, as you go around towards the back, there's that mirror wardrobe cabinet behind those two doors. Up a little higher is a blanket rack. We put our blanket and our pillows up there when we travel. What's really unique about this van is the side windows will actually roll down. And you see the screens there. The side windows do roll completely down, so a lot of fresh air on a, on a nice night. Yes, yeah, they will, they will open completely. And we do have a little bit of a water issue and some of the curtains a little bit stained. So that gives enough privacy when you're sleeping. It gives enough, yeah. Part of this, another storage area. I know everybody loves storage. These are full length drawers. I put all my clothes in. They come out to about there. Keeps going, there it goes. That's amazing. So between my travel supplies and then the front area, I put my clothes. That is very handy. Yeah. So you have two of those. Two of those. This is the engine compartment. Like I was saying, uh, you don't get the noise or the heat from up front. And the best part is when you pull into your campground and it's a little bit cool, the bed is warm from the engine heat. Taking a look in front, the passenger compartment and this is restored pretty much as you would have 
purchase it off the dealership floor. Of course, uh, the seat is a reproduced cushion, but all the door panels, the armrests, those are all original. It's so beautiful. It's like driving artwork. Another interesting part about the dash is the transmission shifter, which is this lever here. There is no park, it's just reverse, neutral, drive, and low. It's a two speed power glide transmission. Uh, so, since there is no park, you have to use the handbrake and you have to make sure the handbrake is fully operational. So, the handbrake is down here and it says trigger. So, I release the trigger, push that down, and it's now ready to roll. Pull it up. Another interesting feature, this vehicle never had the option for air conditioning. So what they did back in the 60s is the vehicles were designed to have uh, free-flowing air from some source. We call these kick panel vents and there's a knob, you pull it open and you see the black grill work down here. There's a little flap door inside there and this opens and closes it and you can adjust it. It just pulls fresh air in from the front. When I did rebuild it, I rebuilt it with a lower compression ratio that I can run regular gas. I don't need to put premium in it. Uh, we built it for economy. We do a lot of traveling. We put about 2,500 miles a year on it. And we wanted something that we could travel fairly cheaply in. Uh, get about 16 miles to the gallon. I love waking up in the morning, opening my eyes, and just being surrounded by the woodwork. We've added a couple of vintage items. We have salt and pepper shaker here in the back and we've got an old Motorola radio. Well, the story with the teardrop trailer is we were doing a lot of camping. My daughter was growing up. She was sleeping on the front bench seat and she was very comfortable and still she started, until she started getting too tall. Uh, we had to come up with a solution, so we found this at a car show about four years ago. And the weight is only 800 pounds, and I knew it wouldn't be a problem towing it with the Greenbrier. So we purchased it from the original builder. He was a cabinet maker out of Michigan. He and his wife used it extensively for a lot of years. Built in the mid-1990s. Uh, he designed this and built it himself. But he was getting up there in his 70s, they weren't going to be camping anymore, so he decided it was ready to sell it to the right person. I have an extensive woodworking background, so he, it, this was his baby, and he had so much sweat into it that he didn't want to let it go to just anyone. So he was very comfortable with selling it to me. Someone who wouldn't paint it. <laughs> right. So I stripped it down, basically, and have refinished pretty much every part of it. I've put a lot of additional features on it also. So we pull up. It's in this position, you open the door. I've got two toggle switches here. We're switching it to the up position. The top is going up slowly. And this is all run off of a 12 volt battery mounted in the back. So it's in the full up position. You've got six foot of standing room in there. Uh, you can change. Uh, unfortunately, there is no room for a little toilet in there, but we've got that in the van. A lot of times when we camp, there's no place to hang your towels. So I put two uh, towel racks in here. Uh, I also built these two shelves for extra storage. And they're held up by magnets, and then I've got little rope at the ends. Okay, in the very front, this, this a lot of times will stump a lot of people. They say, well, what's in there? Is that the battery? And then I've had people come up, oh, what do you got in there? An air conditioner? I'm like, yeah, an air conditioner. They, they, they say it sarcastically, but, <laughs> and this will freeze you out inside. You could keep everything open and it will freeze you out. Okay, so in the rear, this is the galley area. I've got it on uh, hydraulic lift. I've got it displayed now with a vintage uh, fuel stove from the 1940s, uh, World War II actually. Uh, we really haven't used this area much. We do travel, we have a, a microwave 
and we can put the propane stove here. This was what it looked like when we purchased it. Like I said, the gentleman used it extensively. Had a lot of contact paper on a lot of these surfaces. And then all above here was all the dash plaques of all the different shows he attended. And they were all liquid nailed. This is the crank handle for uh, if you, you cannot do this electrically, the top. It won't go electrically or manually. There is a pin I have to pull inside. But basically this would mount here and then you could hand crank the top up or down in case you needed to. Thanks for enjoying the tour of our 64 Corvair Greenbrier van and the teardrop that goes along with it. Uh, if you'd like to see more pictures, uh, you can get on Pinterest. Also, we're members of a group called Tin Can Tourist, and there are a lot of vintage campers on there of which you can see some more of this. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed the video.